American Vanadium on word the company has signed a memo of understanding to supply a German machine tool manufacturer once its Nevada mine enters operation. So when does actual money start changing hands? When do they get some euros? We're joined now by Bill Radvac, President and CEO of American Vanadium. Great to see you, Bill. Thanks for having me on, Andrew. Bill, before we get into uh, the deal with the Germans, can you just explain why vanadium is so important, why investors should be paying attention to the metal itself? Uh, yeah, actually, vanadium is an interesting metal. In 2012, it's one of the few metals that actually increased in consumption uh, while global uh, consumption, you know, GDP was having a tough time and iron and steel consumption was down. Um, vanadium is seen more and more as a way to save money. Uh, in steel. So you add like 0.1% vanadium content into your rebar and your structural steel and it'll increase the strength by up to 50 to 100 percent. That's amazing. So that allows you actually to use, it'll allow, what that allows you to do is use 30 percent less steel. So China's actually uh, changed its building code regulations that last year as part of their five-year plan. That simple code change is expected to increase global consumption of vanadium by up to 40 percent. That's amazing. It's really more like a catalyst than an alloy, isn't it? You just put this minuscule amount in and it increases steel strength so radically. Yeah, and that's why it's actually even more increasing importance even than titanium alloys. The, you know, the super titanium, mm -hmm. vanadium, aluminum alloy, uh, there's about 1.5 tons of vanadium in the new uh, Boeing 787 Dreamliners. Oh, 1.5 tons of vanadium. That's interesting. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, yeah. just, you know, it, it, the uh, alloy itself obviously is, is a super light, strong alloy and, and works well with the uh, carbon composites. So uh, it's increasing importance just across the board. Now, we just looked at a price for vanadium over the past while. It hasn't been going up. Why is that? Yeah, I mean, what we've seen uh, in spite of the increased consumption and production is actually dropping. There's been some inventories and there's some slag inventories primarily out of Russia that have been sort of hitting the market. Mm -hmm. um, but everything is forecasted to go up, and of course, uh, you know we're not concerned today. We're fortunate we're not in production or, or, or putting together production money this year. Um, so you know that all the forecasts are that prices should go up quite strongly over the next five years. Well, tell us about this deal with the Germans. When will you actually get cash from them? Right. Well, this is an interesting prod product. Um, we have you know our vanadium mine uh, pro deposit in Nevada is a very unique one. It's sedimentary. Uh, it's very clean and allows us to use sulfuric acid to heat bleach. Uh, so we can actually produce not just the vanadium for the steel, the, the lower margin markets, but we can go to the premium markets. And what's developing out there is a new technology uh, in energy storage called vanadium flow batteries. Mm -hmm. And it's very unique. It relies on, and you, you have a lot of batteries and other technologies in rare earth where you require the rare earth, but not in great quantities. These are massive, you know, multi-megawatt, multi-million dollar batteries. About 40% of the cost is actually the vanadium. The energy is actually stored in the vanadium in, in solution. And so the more vanadium, the more you store. And there's very few supplies globally that have the ability to produce this super rich, uh, high purity vanadium electrolyte. So what we decided a year and a half ago as a company, rather than just be a, a supplier we want to get in these premium markets, but in North America, as, as now everybody's finally talking about energy storage, uh, vanadium flow batteries are seen as the leading technology for the next five, ten years for that sort of half megawatt to ten megawatt sweet spot. But if we didn't take sort of the bull by the horns and decide to lead in the building of this industry, uh, the vanadium flow battery business in North America, we'd be selling most of our vanadium future in the steel. So we went around globally and talked to all, met with all the uh, battery manufacturers, and we selected Gildemeister because it's the only company actually commercially selling these, you know, large batteries uh, today, and they're doing quite successfully. They also have have a broad lineup of of wind and solar uh, 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 energy um, generating products as well. So you have a, uh, the ability to do a full microgrid. Uh, solution. And actually, can I cut you off there? Are you still working? You're actually building a demo there, aren't you, of solar power, and you're going to store the solar power in big vanadium uh, batteries right on site? Are you still moving ahead with that demo plan? Yeah, absolutely. We uh, filed our plan of operations with uh, BLM in uh, Nevada State uh, in December, 
and that's moving along uh, very well. But actually, as part of that plan, we included a microgrid. So we require about 1.5 megawatts at peak, so it's, it's really low requirement uh, respective to a lot of other mines. Um, but we actually are able to actually run this off solar generation during the day, store the power in these batteries at night, and then use it. So we actually want to put our money where our mouth is and actually uh, show that this can work as a full off-grid. Um, and, you know, and then we look at you know, NRC in Canada, National Research Council in Canada has come to us because they've also, one of their three priorities is energy storage. And they've recognized the Mainflow batteries as a leader. And, and they're very interested in looking. There's over 300 communities in running on diesel oh, that remote like to places. get onto microgrids as well. Yeah. Can I cut you yeah, off? There's many opportunities. Sorry, Bill, uh, we're so short on time, but obviously the, the gigantic batteries for storing electricity could change the economics of wind and solar down the road. Right. That's right. A lot of buzz there. But tell us about the Germans. I mean, when will they have to put up right. money, or, or how does that work? Well, it's interesting. We're going to be evolving that right now. We're in New York this week actually meeting for first potential customer. Uh, they've reached out. Uh, New York State is the world's oldest grid, so they're actually um, pursuing us uh, to see if there's, because there is no uh, current battery solutions for them. There's a lot of research and demo projects. So what we're, as a company, we're, we're going to be doing not only is supplying electrolyte for them globally, but we're going to be representing uh, Gildermeister in North America. So our job right now is to generate uh, sales, and hopefully even this year, of batteries in North America and work on that business while our mine comes on stream. Bill, before we go, I'm sorry, we've less than 20 seconds. Um, have you raised all the money you need to get the mine going or will you have to go to the market? Oh, no, we'll have to go to the market. Um, we've actually held back here. We could go the traditional routes on the vanadium and the offtakes, but that would be more for the traditional steel world. So we want to get to pin this deal and through that evolve into the cash. So we're, we're feeling very positive we'll be able to generate now that this really substantiates our, our $170 million NPV mm -hmm. on our feasibility study. Fascinating stuff. Bill, thanks so much. Thank you. Bill Radback, President and CEO of American Vanadium. Let's have a quick look at our subjective snapshot of the risk for investors who get into American Vanadium. Obviously, they've got pretty high score for country risk. Nevada is mining friendly, putting it mildly. They don't have any production now, so they get no points for that. And they only get one point because they've only, as far as we can see, got one shop covering them right now, Byron, and none of the big bank-owned brokers. So we're giving them three points or risk.